Hello everyone, Bruce O here. I'm recording this video in hopes that it will help some folks understand how to read schematics or wiring diagrams. We're going to look at some very basic circuits and hopefully between that and doing some studying on your own, you'll understand more complex wiring diagrams. To begin with, we need to understand that circuits are basically five components, normally five components. You have a power source, a protection device, a control device, the load, which is the thing that's actually doing the work, and a ground. Your power source in this case is the battery and the battery is grounded and then feeds into the circuit. You have a protection device, in this case, a fuse, a control device, a switch, a load device, in this case, a light bulb, and a ground. Now you notice the ground over here is not connected to the ground over here. Grounds, if you see them on a schematic and they're not shown wired, are assumed to all be connected because the metal of the car serves as the ground connection. When reading a schematic, there's some basic assumptions. Um, your goal is to understand how the circuit works. If you are diagnosing a problem, an electrical problem, you first need to know how the circuit works when it's working correctly to understand when it has a defect. Schematics are shown without active current flow, meaning uh, when you look at the circuit, the switches are not turned on, uh, nothing, nothing is activated. You should identify the power status and when the circuit is provided with power. When you see switches, they are shown in, in their resting position. You'll see how that works as we look at a couple of schematics. Power flow, we can generally assume power, assume power flow is from top to bottom. Uh, this is conventional flow theory from positive to negative. And in understand, understanding schematics, you should combine what you learn with what you know. For instance, you know that when you turn the ignition key on, you might hear the fuel pump running in the car. You might hear a buzzing. And knowing that might help you understand how a fuel system works. First, we'll take a look at a simple circuit, and this is a trunk opening device. Those major components, those five major components we talked about, are power status, protection device, our control, the load, and our ground. Schematics give you other information. They might tell you the wire size, and the wire color, in this case, the wire color is yellow. If it has more than one color, if it says, say, yellow slash black or Y slash B, then the wire would be yellow with a black stripe. If there's three colors in a row, it's the, pr uh, the primary color and two stripes. In this case, this, these schematics have photos available. So there might be a photo catalog that you could actually see the component if you wanna look at what the component looks like. And this schematic uh, shows terminal numbers. If you have a, uh, a plug um, on a particular device and it has more than one terminal, it'll number, you can number the terminals. The terminals are numbered and you can see which terminal is actually connected to the device. When it comes to our power status on this uh, uh, trunk opening device uh, schematic, our power status is hot at all times, which means even with the key off, this circuit is powered and we have a 15 amp fuse. Our control device is the trunk lid switch. This is a button that's within the driver's reach. Our load device is a trunk release mechanism. 
We know that when you have a automatic trunk release that something pops back there and the lid moves up a little bit via a spring, a spring will pop it up a little bit. So a, a solenoid is a device that actually unlatches the trunk and then the trunk pops up from the spring. This type of ground symbol means that we have a wired ground. There's a wire connected to the body or frame back there somewhere. So when we're trying to figure out how this trunk lid circuit works, we want to envision the circuit activated. That means we need to take the control and close it or push the button. Once we do that, current will flow in the circuit. And in this case, I show the current at the top. Um, the red is the positive side of the current and the green is the ground side of the current. And then once power and ground are supplied to the load, then the load activates. In this case, the trunk would pop open. That's a pretty simple circuit. Let's take a look at one that is a little more complicated. And this one involves a circuit with a relay. This happens to be a horn circuit. Here's those major components again, our power status, protection device. This particular circuit has multiple controls. It also has multiple loads and it has multiple grounds. Our power status again is hot at all times. So with the key off, we have power to the horns and the fuse is powered at all times, of course. When we look at our controls, the first control we have, this would be our primary control. This is the horn button. And you see there's two switches there. The dotted line in between the switches means that those switches work together. So if you, you probably know if you push on one side of your horn pad, that the horn will honk or you push on the other side, it will honk. So that's why they show this as double switched. We have a secondary control, which is a switch that's inside the relay. We'll learn how relays work in just a minute, but you can see this switch right here. Its resting position is unconnected. We have two loads, the loads that do the primary work, which is the horns. And we have a load inside that relay, which is what we refer to as a relay coil. This is a coil of wire that creates a magnetic field when it's energized. And we have our grounds. Uh, we have one ground inside the steering wheel. And when they put the ground symbol with a solid dot and the three lines underneath it, like they have it here on the component, that means that it's a case ground meaning this switch is directly below, directly bolted to something, some other component that is grounded. In other words, there's no wire, the switch is directly grounded to something else. And we also have a wire ground, G16 is a wired ground. How does that relay work? Uh, pretty simple, if we supply power and ground to the load, which is the coil, that creates a magnetic field which acts upon the switch and pulls the switch over. So knowing that, let's look at how the circuit works. Uh, when that switch is closed, by the way, current would flow through. So here's our horn circuit. We're gonna honk the horn by pushing on the switch, which is the horn button on the steering wheel. That's gonna cause that relay to be activated and pull the switch over inside the relay. Now current can flow from the fuse down through the relay and to each of the horns. And the horns are already grounded, so current can flow all the way to ground. And this would cause the horns to honk. Notice also that I've shown this power supplying the other side of the relay where the coil is, and the coil is grounded when we push on the horn buttons in the steering wheel. Okay, next let's look at a uh, little bit more complex circuit. 
This not only combines a relay, but there's multiple components in this circuit. Let's take a little tour and look at the individual components. We have our power supply. There's actually two power supplies for this circuit. We have a mode switch. This uh, is on your uh, dash and it's how you choose whether the uh, air conditioning or heater is on and whether it flows to your face or your feet or to the windshield. Uh, to back up a little bit, when we look at those fuse boxes, this particular schematic shows where they're located. Uh, this fuse is located under the hood in the fuse center. And this fuse is located in the fuse block, which is under the dash. We have a fan switch. This is a switch where we choose the different speeds of the fan. The fan switch is wired into what we call a resistor pack, which is three different resistors with a unique wiring uh, pattern. We have that relay. In this case, we've spread the relay across the entire circuit, uh, entire schematic to understand a little more how it works. There's our blower motor. This is what's blowing the air inside the cabin. And we have multiple grounds. Remember the basics that the schematic is shown without active current flow. We're gonna be looking for this power status. We're gonna understand that the switches, especially the one in the relay is a resting position. Uh, it happens to be open and that the power flow is top to bottom. When looking at the power status, we have on the left side, we have hot at all times. So this fuse would be powered with the key off. And this fuse is only powered in the run position. So when your, your ignition key, you normally have an off position, a accessory position, a run position, and a start position. The start is spring loaded. And when you push on it, your car starts, then it springs back to the run position. So only the run position supplies power to this fuse. This fuse is a 30 amp fuse. This one is a 25 amp fuse. The power flow uh, flows down to the loads or the relays. And it does that through a mode switch. The, uh, the mode switch feeds into the fan switch. In the fan switch, we have four choices, low, medium, high, and max or one, two, three, and four. We also have in that fourth position, we have power flow going another direction. Three of these switches flow over to the resistor back and one of them flows off in another direction. And once we have power going through the load, the load is already grounded. So let's see how it works. First of all, we're hot at all times on that uh, circuit that begins under the hood, and we're hot in run uh, on the circuit that begins inside the cabin. Let's take that cabin circuit first. Power flows through the fuse down into the mode switch. The mode switch, uh, if it's in the off position, the current doesn't flow any farther, but if you select any of the other positions, that uh, solid line that swings across there, that tells you that power uh, current flows to beyond the switch on any of those, if you choose any of those positions. So if we choose any of those positions, current flows down through the blower switch. In the blower switch, it can choose path one, path two, or path three. Path one, goes through all three resistors. Path two goes through two of the resistors and path one goes through a single resistor. The more resistors, the less current ends up eventually flowing to the motor. So we can assume that all three of those flow through the resistors and go on down to the blower motor relay. Now the blower motor relay is a double throw relay. It has two choices that it can connect. And in this case, 
it's already connected in its resting position to send current down to the motor. So once that motor receives current, it's already grounded. It's going to power the motor. And depending on which pathway we chose, it would be fan speed and low if it went through three resistors. The fan speed would be medium if it went through two resistors. And it would be high speed or the third position if it went through only one resistor. However, there's a fourth position. So let's take that fourth position. That fourth position will send current over to the coil side of the relay or the load side of the relay. We've already seen that a relay, when it gets power and ground, will create a magnetic field. That magnetic field will act upon the switch and pull that switch over. Once that switch is pulled over, now we can feed current from that higher fused circuit. And that now provides direct current to the fan motor. So now it operates at its maximum speed. I hope this video is helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat below. And don't forget to catch my other videos and like this video if it pleased you. Everyone take care. Good luck on reading schematics.